Hey guys, welcome to Motor Rides. My name is Amit, and this, as you would know, is the Škoda Slavia. Now everybody knows that sedans are out and SUVs and crossovers are in. What's the reason for that? Well, the SUVs look butch. They apparently have a lot better go anywhere capability and better clearance as well. However, they lack the boot space that big sedans offer. And in that context, the Slavia offers a unique package in the sense that it sits on the same platform that powers the Kushak and Škoda have very cleverly kept the ground clearance very high. So this car can pretty much do what the Kushak can do and can offer a lot more boot space to people who are looking for a very, very uh, spacious family car. But before we get there, there are some very interesting facts about this car that you should know. And the first of those facts is its sheer size. This is an enormous car for its class. And in terms of its length, it's almost as long as the city, but it's wider and it has a lot longer wheelbase than the city. Plus, if you compare it with the Elantra, which is a segment higher, it comes very, very close in terms of its length. It's only eight centimeters shorter than the Elantra about five centimeter narrower, but its height is about three centimeter more. However, the wheelbase is about five centimeter short. So that makes this car very, very close to the Elantra, which comes from a segment above. Comparing with the Kushak, it's over 300 mm longer. So it's in effect a longer car than the Kushak. Now the Skoda Rapid is also out and as compared to the Rapid which it replaces, it's 128 mm longer, 53 mm wider, 21 mm taller and the wheelbase here is almost 100 mm longer than the Rapid. So in effect, this is the widest car in its segment with the longest wheelbase, is the second longest and has the second tallest height but it doesn't trail the leader by much. So that was about the dimensions where this car really, really stands out. And apart from that, it does stand out in terms of its styling also. You have that familiar hexagonal Škoda grille, although the difference here is that you have uh, somewhat twin vertical slats here on the Kushak, but here you have single slats and it does look very, very handsome. You have some very solid creases on the bonnet and in typical Škoda style, this is timeless and will age very, very well. You have uh, LED projector headlamps here, although the blinkers here are bulb and you have a halogen as the fog lamp. Now, what's missing here is front parking sensors and you also don't have 360 degree camera. And I really believe that for this segment, uh, Škoda could have offered those features, but when it comes to looks, it does look very, very beautiful. It gets those shards and the eyelashes which define most of the Škoda cars. And I must say, this is one of the nicest looking cars in its segment. Looks are subjective, so I leave it up to you to decide how the face of the car looks. Coming to the side, again, you have some very straight cut lines and two horizontal upswept lines towards the rear define its uh, side profile. You have this chrome lining on the greenhouse area, shark fin antenna. You have a sunroof here, mind you, the Škoda Octavia doesn't have a sunroof. This one does. You have this Škoda badging here. 16-inch two-tone diamond cut wheels with 205 section tires and the all-important 179 mm, which is almost 180 mm of ground clearance, which is short only 9 mm as compared to the Kushak. So the ground clearance here is very, very generous. The ORVMs have these blinkers. They are two-tone. And the paint quality here is absolutely amazing. Coming towards the rear, you have LED primary lights and the LED lights also double up as fog lamps. Bulb blinkers and reversing light. You have some chrome elements here and there which really enhances the premiumness of the car. There's this chrome lining here, a reflector. You have these sensors here. The camera sits here. And overall, if you look at the styling of this car, it does stand out and looks quite big and quite sturdy as compared to the other cars in the segment. I really love how this car looks and it should do well in terms of its looks. If you are going to the showroom, you'll realize it does come across as a car from a segment above as, as compared to the cars that it's competing with. Now, let's talk about the boot space and that again is a highlight of this car at 521 liters. This is by far the largest boot in this segment. And not just this segment, if you compare it with the Elantra also, this boot is 
bigger than that of the Elantra. So if you're looking for a big boot space, want to travel around with your family, this car really offers a lot of space. Plus you have 60-40 split rear seat, which further enhances the loading capacity of this car. Let's flip the floorboard here. And you do get a full-sized 205 section wheel here, although you don't get an alloy. Another very interesting thing here is that very cleverly, Skoda have integrated the 100 watt subwoofer with uh, the cover of the spare wheel. So it sits right here and saves some space. We're going to talk about the sound quality in a bit. But overall, this space is phenomenal. And now let's get inside and see how good the quality of the interior is and what all features Skoda offered. Now before we get in, we need to have a look at this key. And uh, it has a lock and unlock button along with boot release and it's a flip out key but what i really want you to know is that unlike the vento where you had the window glass winding up when you long press the lock button it doesn't happen here so that's a feature that has been deleted like the kushak and the mirrors here are auto folding now while i see a button here it doesn't open when i press the request sensor which means that you will have to take the key out of your pocket to open the door and once you open these wide doors, you realize there are a few clever bits on the doors as well. And first of those are these reflective tapes, which allow the traffic coming from behind to see that the door is ajar from a distance. Also, these elastic bands have been given on the front two doors uh, to hold anything that you want to put there firmly. You have uh, electric folding and electric mirrors and the windows apart from the driver window are not one touch up and down. Now, if you look at the materials here, you don't have any soft touch materials in the main panels. You have this soft touch material where your arm is going to rest, but most of the materials here are hard to touch. The textures are different. You have this piano black here, chrome door pulls, and this dimpled hard texture here as well. But all of this is very, very durable. We have known uh, the quality of Skoda cars uh, and the quality of the materials here, although it's not soft to touch, but it's going to last a very, very long time. Now, the seat height may not be ideal, completely ideal. It's slightly lower uh, than what would be ideal, but it's not as low as you would have probably seen in cars like the Honda City. So for a sedan, the seat height is actually quite good. It's quite easy to get in and you also get this uh, seat height adjustment, although you don't have electric seats here. Uh, we're not complaining because that's not a standard feature in this segment. Here you have this uh, reasonably well-sized storage compartment. Light controls are here. The lights are automatic. The wipers are also rain sensing. The leveler is here. You also get push button start and stop and you get this very beautiful steering which is adjustable for both tilt and telescopic adjustment. It's leather wrapped and the controls, although they are beautifully finished, I am not very fond of the interface here. And I really believe that uh, the ease of use here could probably have been a little bit better. It takes a bit of time to understand uh, all of these menus and the overall navigation, both on the infotainment and on the instrument console could probably have been a little bit better in my personal opinion. You have these stocks for the wiper here and the cruise control functions can be controlled from here. The central screen is 10 inches and the instrument console is also a fully digital unit at 8 inches. Now with this console you have three different views and here you have a taco with speedo or whatever information you want here. So right now it's showing me average efficiency which is right now low because the car has been idling for some time. Then you have only the speedo here and then you also have a more basic uh, digital speedo kind of a view so this digital cockpit can be customized as per your requirements you have the uh, fuel gauge here the distance to dry and a lot of other information can be cycled through but as i mentioned it probably could have been a little bit easier to understand the 10 inch screen here also comes with a lot of features and apart from uh, the features that you get on the touch screen you also get a 380 watt eight speaker plus one subwoofer audio system which is pretty good for the class although it's not audiophile level uh, when the volume is very high it doesn't blast but it's not very clear uh, at mid levels it sounds very good and uh, overall for the segment i think it's a good audio system although if you are an audiophile and 
someone who's used to listening to some really really precise audio systems then probably you'll have to like you know look for something else or maybe upgrade it but for most part it's a good audio system it also it also comes with quite a few apps which are pre-installed and and these apps include audiobooks bbc world service booking.com gana and sigic which is basically a navigation system that does not require you to be connected so if you're traveling if you don't have internet connection then you can still navigate yourself although uh, it's not very very detailed but it's useful nonetheless you get wireless apple carplay and android auto you also get ambient lighting here although you cannot choose the colors you also get a lot of uh, driving related data on this screen and just like the instrument console the menus and the navigation here could also probably have been a little bit more sorted uh, you also get skoda my connect uh, app here you can do live tracking of your car geofence it you can route track it you can record and report the driving data the driver uh, behavior can be analyzed you have the feature of walk to car and you also have tow alert the ac unit here is also pretty familiar and you have a uh, climate control although it's not a two zone unit temperature can be increased or decreased using this slider and the flow control can be increased and decreased using this slider here you can also put it on auto and it also comes with air care which is basically uh, a control for the air quality inside the storage spaces here are pretty generous too and you have this very usable space here and this slanting pad here is uh, wireless charging equipped so my phone is currently charging and that's a fantastic feature to have this car also comes with ventilated seats which is amazing auto start stop function is there you can lock the you can lock the doors using this button here there's this little crevice here for the key a 12 volt power socket here two usb type c sockets here you also have these two cup holders and the cup holder up front comes with these dimples and there's a lot of space under this armrest so you can store as you can see a sunglasses case a wallet and whatever else you want to the armrest itself is sliding although it is not height adjustable the handbrake here is a mechanical unit you don't have an electric brake and that is okay for the class that this car competes in if you look at the quality of the materials on the dashboard it's par for the course and although it's not soft to touch we don't see soft to touch materials in this class anyway this is a very durable material you also have this recess where you can put uh, an idle or you can put your cell phone or wallet or whatever you want so this again is a useful space which has been provided by skoda now if you look at the colors and the materials uh, the top part is a durable material you have this uh, bronze inlay here which i personally am not very fond of i think this could have been a different color then you have this piano black and a dimpled texture here which again although very durable uh, is not soft to touch you get these chrome bezels on the side ac vents and a chrome lining on the center vents as well which are not circular they are rectangular another great feature to have is a cooled glove box and the glove box is reasonably sized as well the seats are two tone black and beige they are perforated for the top variants they are uh, done in leather and since it comes with ventilation they are perforated as well and they are very wide very comfortable as you would expect from skoda these seats are some of the most comfortable in its segment and i don't really have anything to complain about and along with the fantastic ride quality of this car uh, it really makes it one of the most comfortable cars to drive in this segment it also comes with this uh, sunroof and the controls for this are here and this is how it operates no vanity mirror for the driver side there's a toll ticket holder there's a ticket holder here as well mirror is auto dimming and you have a vanity mirror here but you don't have illumination now there are a few things that probably could have been here and before i name them I must say that this is a fairly well equipped cabin I am not complaining at all I really believe that for the class uh, Skoda have offered a lot of features they have done quite a lot for the Indian customer and uh, knowing that the quality the build quality and the drive quality of Skoda cars is superior to the other cars that are in the segment uh, you do get a lot of value for your money but there are some things that probably could have been here knowing that this is a premium car a 360 degree camera here uh, would really have uh, been amazing uh with the skoda connect app you don't get a uh, remote start stop and remote ac on uh, features that you do get on some other cars some cars in the segment are now getting blind spot monitoring system which is not there also the seat belt here is not height adjustable 
and uh, last but not the least there are no driving modes here uh, while i personally don't use driving modes much but uh, it's a feature that is available on some other cars and uh, you don't have that here finally uh, there is another small thing while you do have air care here uh, some of the cars have the aqi index which you won't get in this car all of these features can very well be done without but uh, being a journalist uh, i have to observe everything and i have to mention things that uh, are important to you so overall it's a very durable very well made interior uh, none of the cars in this segment get soft to touch materials and in that sense it's a very very uh, well done unit although my only complaint would be uh, with the ease of use of the infotainment and the instrument console the navigation and the ease of use could probably have been a little bit better now let's get to the back seat because there's a lot of space there and a lot of features and i'm pretty sure that you would be interested to know how much space and what features you have there so let's get there and now the material quality here and the texture is similar to what you have up front although uh, this material here uh, up front is a little different you have this soft to touch material as an armrest there is space for a uh, 1 liter bottle and uh, up front you also have space for an umbrella which i forgot to mention but the front door panel also has an umbrella holder uh, getting inside is going to be easy the seat is slightly lower than ideal but getting inside is not a problem with these wide doors and once you are inside you would be amazed with the amount of leg space that you have and not just the leg space the amount of thigh support that you have is also amazing you get this little pocket here where you can put your cell phone rear ac vents are here two type c usb sockets are here now my only gripe about this is that uh, some phones are still not available with a type c usb socket so if you don't have a cable you'll probably have to buy one uh, and uh, if you want to be charging your phone on the go you'll need to have a type c uh, usb socket at both the ends this is a wide armrest which is going to add comfort to your journeys two cup holders and three individual adjustable headrests for all the three passengers who want to be sitting at the back seat you have these individual reading lights for the passengers which is great the headliner here is pretty good and i must really mention that the quality of the headliner here is better than that of kushak where you have a fleece like material it's a better quality material here so that again is fantastic now another great thing is that this seat here as i mentioned before is 60 40 foldable which means that uh, the space in the boot which already is fantastic can be further extended and the seat back the contouring and everything is amazing the ride quality on this car is fantastic and all of that really makes for a very very nice car to be chauffeur driven in also so while this car is not from a class where you generally find cars which are chauffeur driven if you want a car where you want a chauffeur to be driving you this car does fit the bill now about the weight this is one of the widest cars in the segment and if you can indeed seat 3 abreast of of course uh, the shoulders will rub but for short to medium journeys you can seat three adults although in the middle you don't have good contouring so it's like a hump where you'd be uh, not so comfortable but in terms of width it does offer you a reasonable amount of width to uh, travel with three on board you also get these top tether isofix child seat mounts a proper three point seat belt for the third passenger so there's a lot of uh, stuff that has been included and in terms of comfort in terms of the overall airiness since these windows are really big you do feel like you're sitting in a big car a very comfortable car and it has to be one of the nicest sedans in its segment to be sitting in the back seat of the headroom here is also very good and for people who are up to 6 feet there should not be any problem at all so full marks to skoda for the back seat of the slavia now i've shown you the front and the back of this car and it's time for us to take this car for a spin Uh, which of course is the highlight but before that let's also talk about safety because this car offers a lot of safety features and the features on this car include tire pressure monitoring system traction control system electronic differential lock which is a part of the traction control system wherein uh, if a wheel is spinning faster than the other wheel then the brakes come on and they make sure that uh, both the wheels are spinning at the same rate it comes with hill hold control it also comes with brake disc wiping which is a great feature it comes with multi collision brake wherein if the car is uh, 
in the middle of an accident where it, it collides with the car, the brakes apply so that the car doesn't move about and it can indeed save you from sustaining further damage. It comes with ESP, ABS with EBD, Isofix child seat mounts as I mentioned and it also comes with as many as six airbags. So a very safe car to buy overall. Now, another highlight is that even the base variant comes with a lot of these safety features and those features include ESC, vehicle stability control, traction control system, multi-collision brake, brake disc, wipe and hydraulic brake boost. So even the base variant has a lot of these features. The only thing that's probably missing here is blinds and had there been blinds on the side windows and at the rear it would really have been amazing now before i start talking about anything else while being behind the steering wheel of this car just look at the kind of road that i'm driving it on and it just drives over bad roads like a very capable uh, crossover if not an suv and that is a standout feature of this car it feels very very sturdily built the ground clearance is fantastic and it takes bad roads in its stride like a pro so, if the lack of go-anywhere capability is something that stops you from buying a sedan, then you really don't need to worry about that because with its ground clearance and sturdy suspension, it really glides over bad surfaces and that ride quality is just one of those highlights. And the other highlight is this. It simply sticks to the road and gives you a fantastic drive feel. Watch Koda is known for and the ride and handling package of this car is astoundingly good it is by far the best ride handling package in this segment absolutely spot on and not just is it very comfortable it is amazingly fun to drive as well and i am right now driving the one liter turbo petrol it goes a notch up when you're driving the 1.5 liter this engine itself is fairly powerful it has the most amount of torque in the segment 178 newton meters of torque which is the best in class it also gets 115 ps of peak power and the power is produced between 5000 and 5500 rpm in its uh, peak state and if you talk about the torque the torque is produced from as low as 1750 rpm all the way to 4500 rpm so you have this surge that comes in as soon as you uh, reach 2000 rpm and and it's not that the power is not available lower down the rev range from as low as 1000 rpm you have some movement going on however you do feel that uh, the power is building up from 1500 rpm and then it keeps on building there is a kick up in the power at 3000 rpm goes all the way up to uh, 5000 rpm where you can uh, feel the power building up and it really is a nice experience to uh, feel this car surging forward for a small one liter turbo petrol engine this car is surprisingly good fun to drive the steering also has the right amount of weight gives you a lot of confidence on such winding roads it is an absolute joy to drive I can really say with confidence that this is a fantastic car to drive although the ground clearance which is slightly up doesn't make you feel very connected uh, to the ground but I believe uh, that extra ground clearance is important uh, to lend it that practicality that usability and Skoda have done a fantastic job of uh, endowing this car the best ride and handling in its segment now talking about the engine uh, as I mentioned the engine builds its power from relatively lower down the uh, range for a turbo petrol engine and there are no complaints whatsoever there is a very mild lag that you can feel it's not entirely a lag it's just that the power really builds up after a certain point in time however it's very very tractable and you don't really have to shift much this six speed manual transmission is a joy to operate the throws are not too long the short throw gearbox is very very easy to operate and uh, is very very slick shifting as well I quite like driving this car and I look forward to taking this out for a longish drive. About the fuel efficiency, within the city, even if uh, you are faced with some stop-start traffic, you'll get 12 to 13 kmpl within the city and on the highway, if you're driving with a light right foot, you'll get uh, about 18 kmpl. The cabin is well insulated from the outside noises, the wind noise, uh, ambient noises, tire noise, all of that is pretty well cut out. However, this being a three-cylinder unit, the engine noise does 
percolate inside the cabin after you cross two and a half, three thousand RPM. It's not a bother. It's just that it's slightly more than what I would ideally want it to be. But there is nothing to complain about. Let me just tell you that overall, the ride, the handling, the overall experience, the comfort on this car, and this beautiful one liter TSI engine, all of that really makes it. a complete joy to drive and i must say if you want to buy a car in this segment it is presenting itself as a very very strong contender now apart from all of that the engine really sounds very sporty this being a three cylinder unit it has a very nice bubbly sporty note to it after 5000 rpm x you on to rev it feels nice now about the gear speeds of this car in the first gear this car goes to 48 km per hour in the second gear goes to 92 km per hour and in the third gear it nudges 140 km per hour now in terms of acceleration the 0 to 100 timing of this car is about 12 km which is far for course nothing too sprightly but for a 1 liter uh, turbo engine i think it's pretty impressive so in a sense the skoda slavia has the potential to bring some charm back to the sedan segment a lot of people might just move back to the sedan segment knowing that skoda is a premium brand and has been making some really good sedans uh, in the past This car would be priced relatively aggressively, from what I understand. And if you look at its competitors, the City is priced between 11 to 15 lakh rupees. Uh, the Verna is priced between 9 to 15 lakh rupees. The Sierra's from 8.5 to 11.7, and the Elantra, which is from a segment above, is priced between 18 to 20 lakh rupees. Looking at all of those prices, my hunch is that the Slavia will be priced uh, in a wide band of 10 to 18 lakh rupees because that 1.5 liter petrol. is the most powerful and is somewhat a segment above uh, the cars that we have in this class so 10 to 18 lakh rupees starting price 10 lakh top end variant 18 lakh is uh, what the price band should be like and for that price i really believe that the slavia is offering a lot of car for the money and if you are concerned about uh, the maintenance or service costs of the skoda i have something to share with you this car will come with a 4 year all inclusive warranty where your service and labor cost and everything will be covered for 24499 rupees which is amazing and it will convert to about 0.45 rupees per kilometer uh, cost of ownership this car comes with the 4 year warranty and can be extended to 2 years which again is fantastic now in terms of colors i don't know uh, all the colors since i don't have that information but this red and a blue which is exclusive to the 1.5 is there for sure and i can tell you that the blue looks fantastic and i for one would definitely go for this car in this segment if i had to buy something uh, the only problem is that there is no diesel so if you're looking for a diesel car you'll probably go with something else the city or the verna but if you want a petrol definitely this is one of the strongest contenders and you should definitely go and check out this car if you're looking to buy a car in this segment you have some alternatives also the kushak the creta the seltos and uh, uh the tigun so you can always choose from the suvs also but among the sedans this has to be one of the strongest contenders i really hope that i was able to cover this car as comprehensive as you expect us to still if you have any questions put them down in the comments section and i'll be very happy to answer all your questions do not forget to subscribe to motorrides do like share and share the joy uh, do give us some encouragement uh your subscription your likes your comments do really motivate us to do our best and that's really what keeps us going until next time then this is amit changani signing off rev hard rev free and ride safe